Welcome to the CBIS EMS Configuring the Employee Portal tutorial. The objective today is to use this tutorial and go along with the Employee Portal worksheet that your account manager should have sent you uh, or is available on the EMS Resource Center to use that worksheet along with this tutorial to help in setting up the Employee Portal. This worksheet is interactive, so please complete it and send back to your account manager and it's something that we will follow up with you on in the upcoming days. Please make sure that you turn up your volume and you have all your controls at the bottom should you want to fast forward, pause, or rewind. Section 1 is the company information. Part of what I'll be doing today is using a, a sample company that's already set up or a sample employee portal so that you can see the outcome of where things that we ask questions on here will then be displayed once set up. So Section 1 goes over the company information. That's address information, your company contact information. That information will not be displayed on all templates, but it may be displayed in certain uh, areas of the system. For example, on applicant tracking, if that's a module that you'll be utilizing. When a candidate comes in uh, to apply for the position, it will list the company's address information. The next section and in, in the screen that you have in front of you here uh, in different parts on different themes uh, on the portal, it's contact information. So section 1.2 is the contact information that you want to display to your employees. These are current employees on the system should they have a question or you want them to reach out for uh, any feedback on the site. Section 1.3 is a company logo and in here uh, on this theme or template you see in the very top left hand corner and it will be displayed in the top left hand corner of most any theme uh, at your company logo. Should you not have a logo or not want to present the logo then you can uh, always choose not to do that and just have your company name displayed in text at the top. We, we do accept uh, JPEG files uh, so if you have a JPEG file please email that to your account manager. Section 2 talks about themes. And we also have on our resource center, and your, your account manager may also send to you uh, kind of a sample of some of the different themes. There is no change in uh, functionality on any of the themes. All it does is just change the layout and the look and feel. Uh, it may put things um, on the left side. Another theme may have things on the right-hand side. So look through some of the themes and kind of get an idea <coughs> of the differences and some of the different uh, options there. Just let, let us know your preference, the, the label or the number of the, the theme that you would want to have set up. Most of those themes do have the ability to put a graphic. Some of them are already stock images. So for example, you may have a gentleman in a tie or uh, a, a group of people sitting at a desk. Those are just stock images that we can change. Most of the time, the graphic is always going to be displayed at the top. So the section here that you see uh, in front of you on my screen uh, we have this, uh, these two hands with dirt and, and, a, and a plant growing out. Uh, that entire section that's light blue here would be a graphic that we could put. Also, in addition to, we can put uh, a message or something like that. The most common thing that our uh, clients send to us is a graphic that's probably already on your company's web page or on your intranet so that it has the same look and feel and your employees are familiar with it. If you do have a graphic you want, you want to, us to upload, please send that to your account manager. Again, as a JPEG file, we'll, we'll take care of resizing that. Section 3 talks about the home page message. Uh, the home page message I have highlighted here, um, it could change on a daily basis or weekly basis. A lot of times during open enrollment, you may want to change that. Uh, first time to the site, you may want to welcome your employees to the site and let them know some of the things that they can do. Um, so just let us know a, a good welcome message that displays front and center of any theme. You don't have to have any message at all if you don't want. Also know that the formatting, you can change that. So if you want bold letters or different colored font or different size font, then we can do all the different formatting and, and make that look uh, as, as aesthetically pleasing as you would like. Section 4 talks about the different modules and functions to be turned on. And, and primarily, that's uh, over here on the left-hand side where I'm hovering now. It shows up in a few other parts. Uh, there are a few other modules displayed here. These are, are, by and large, modules that don't require another part of the system to be turned on. So, uh, yes, there is a place to request time off, and there are other modules. There are performance management, things like that. Those are not what we're talking about here. These are, are modules that uh, can stand by themselves and don't require those other modules to be turned on and configured prior to that. Some of the things that you'll notice here might be like uh, the employee directory for employees to look up 
uh, other employees' contact information, to-do list items, just reminders to employees. Any of those that we want to start with so the employees have a few things when they log in for the first time to see, uh, we would like to know which one of those, uh, which ones of those that you would like to have turned on. Section five is the portal links. Uh, I'm going to scroll down over here on the left-hand side. Portal links are just simply uh, a link to another website. Uh, it could be uh, maybe to your a benefit carrier site, might be to uh, uh, maybe some type of company-sponsored site. You might have a, a rewards program and you want to link to that, or you may have um, some type of uh, cell phone carrier discount, you want to link to that cell phone provider or, or whatever. Just list any of the, uh, the URLs that you want to display there and what you want the description on the site to be. So for example, if you provided a, a discount with Verizon for any of your employees who use Verizon, then your description might say something along the lines of um, Verizon cell phone discount. And the URL again behind it would be whatever uh, the specific site at Verizon that you want to put, verizon.com forward slash, you know, uh, company discounts. Section 5.2 is company content links. So a little bit different than just a portal link, where a portal link just is a, a word and you click on it and it takes you to a site. Company content links, uh, they're going to be displayed down here uh, where I'm hovering over under company links. So. Let's say, for example, I click on a word for there. It's going to pull up another page. It's not going to take me to a specific site yet. And it gives you the ability to add some content. Uh, so you might want to explain in the prior example where I talked about maybe Verizon gives your company a discount for your employees. You may want to explain the discount first. So you want to have some text around that. Uh, let them know uh, a little bit more about the program. Um, what they need to tell the people when they call them or if they go into a store. And then you can embed a link in there that links them out to another page. So using the Verizon example, you may talk about um, this is what the discount is. These are the limitations of the discount. Uh, when you go into the store, when you go online to, to get the discount, this is our company code that you need to give them and tell them. And then say, if you're interested in getting that discount, then click here. And behind the word here, we would embed what the URL would be to take them to that site. So again, filling out the portal worksheet in section 5.2, let us know what the display text would be. So that's the first text that you want them to click from the portal. So it could be cell phone discount, for example. Uh, then the content text, which is all the detail of what you want uh, the portal to say. And then if there's any URL or any embedding in behind that, let us know what the links are that you're going to embed. Moving on to section six is portal documentation. Uh, the first thing, before we present documents to employees, uh, the first thing that we need to do is categorize those documents so that it's organized for the employees when they come out to see the different documentation. Uh, so the, the two things that, that we'd like for you to send to your account manager would be the category, uh, so the title and then any restrictions or eligibility to that category. So an example might be that you have a company handbook. And so for a category on that, you might want um, employee uh, policy documents. And under that, you might put a, a time off policy, the handbook. You might put uh, different policies specific to sexual harassment or, or uh, attendance or something like that. Whatever the categories are, just list what those would be. And then if there are only certain employees that can see that category. Another example might be you have uh, a category for um, uh, dress code. And if you have a group of maybe sales professionals that don't necessarily adhere to that because they're out, outside of the office, then you may have an eligibility rule that excludes those employees from seeing that document. And under restrictions, just explain uh, more is better in that case on, on what you want. Uh, section 6.2, once we've set up the categories, uh, there, there are three things that we need you to do. Give us the name that the document should be displayed as. So again, if you want us to put your company policy, then the display name probably is going to say company policy or uh, you know, employee handbook, something like that. And then tell us which of the categories that we set up in section 6.1 does that document fall under. And then when you return the portal worksheet to your account manager, uh, make sure to attach those documents in that email. And then to wrap up, section seven is uh, the employee account uh, formatting. So when, 
when you get the portal set up and you're ready, we are going to, to create usernames and passwords for all of your employees and distribute those in mass. When we send those and distribute those in mass, we want to make sure that we're using uh, a certain type of logic that you prefer, and we have a list, so um, you can get that list from your account manager or they are on the EMS Resource Center of all of our options for usernames and passwords, whether you want first initial last name, uh, if you want a password that um, you know, some portion of their social security number or of their combination of their email address or something like that. Uh, there is a corresponding number to the scheme of their ID and password on, on the document. Please make sure that you uh, pick the one that, that you prefer and just include here in section 7.1 what your preference is. Uh, so that, that's a uh, high-level overview of the employee portal worksheet that we've asked you to complete. That gives us a good start. Uh, that by no means finishes the employee portal build. Your account manager will follow up with you upon receipt of, of that worksheet and we'll schedule time to then go through the end results of building that portal and talk to you about next steps and uh, ultimately the goal is to release to your employees. Should you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email or call your account manager. Thank you.